Chicago, a city known for its many landmarks, breathtaking architecture, and beautiful lakefronts, is a city with no shortage of its attractions and amenities. Of all its attractions, though, there is still perhaps none more worldly popular than Michael Jordan and the six-time NBA champion Chicago Bulls. While all of the world would watch in awe, though, what would go unbeknownst to most would be the efforts and strength of a community and its leaders that paved the way for Michael and his Bulls to have a place to call home. West Haven, home to the United Center, is a beautiful community bordered by Ashland Avenue, Tallman, Van Buren, and Lake Street that sits just west of the Chicago Downtown Loop area. Visiting what is now a thriving community, one could easily find it difficult to imagine the devastation that once plagued this neighborhood. In 1968, following the assassination of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., riots would display the level of frustration of African American communities around the country and would also bring devastation to this near west side community. So what you had was enormous situations of looting and enormous fires. The west side looked as though it had been bombed. Uh, you could see the smoke from all over the city. With fires burning for days on end, the riots would virtually lay waste to what was once a flourishing community. Systematic disinvestment and redlining would soon follow, discouraging hopes of any economic rebounding. The tides would shift, though, when in 1987, residents organized to boycott a proposed Chicago Bear Stadium that would result in the loss of homes and displacement of residents. To drive home their concerns, the community would stage a football game at the home of Bears owner Michael McCaskey. I remember, you know, carloads and busloads of folks uh, going out to Winneka to play football. <laughs> Not very far from... Uh, uh, Mr. McCaskey's house. Uh, those that weren't playing football uh, went out about in that neighborhood and passed out flyers. Uh, and that, as you might imagine, as anybody might imagine, uh, that created a shockwave effect. The people they wanted to move out of the community were the most stable people in the community. They were, they were older men and women who had purchased their homes some time ago. Um, they had invested in the community. They were clear on where everything was in the neighborhood and should not have been moved from where they were. Terms proposed by the community would derail the Bears' efforts, but in a historic meeting at Malcolm X College would lay foundation for negotiating the building of what is now the United Center. The city of Chicago agreed uh, to uh, help us condemn the property. Um, but we had to satisfy the community. Selflessly insisting investment in their community prior to any construction, six key residents with properties in the footprint of the proposed site would find strong and proper leadership through longtime resident and community activist Ernest Gates. So I walked into Malcolm X, and they're standing there with a... Uh, a, 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 just a, a t-shirt rolled up with muscles rippling with a chip of wood taped to his shoulder glaring was Ernest Gates and that was the first time I had met Ernest Gates. I'm Ernest Gates, Executive Director of the New Westside Community Development Corporation. Ernest Gates, oh man, uh, what can I say? Um, uh, you may have to get another tape. We would have to prove ourselves to, to the to community, and Ernest was the leader. He had grown up and lived in this community all his life, and he cared about the community and its residents. Ernest had really been providing the leadership. He was, for me, the center of this organization. He was the moving force. It was, it was his idea, it was his strength that was carrying us forward. To consolidate their efforts, the community would soon form the Near West Side Community Development Corporation. Uh, the community has so many disparate interests. Somebody needed to pull together all the wishes of the community. And that's, what, that's the function that Near West served. I was born and raised in this community, and uh, I started doing uh, rehab projects on my own. 
and I saw Near West as the perfect vehicle to continue um, to do the things that I was doing personally, but on a much larger scale throughout the community. Led by Ernest and co-chair Wilma Ward, Near West would assure that all terms of the contract between the community and the Bulls Blackhawks organization were sufficiently met. Wilma was a great friend to everyone and a, a, a great leader in the community. Wilma's contribution, Wilma Ward's contribution to the organization and the uh, community is that she kind of served as the conscience of the organization. Along with Reverend Tyson, through this real-life dynamic duo's persistence, Near West would lead the community in negotiations with the Bulls Blackhawks for building replacement housing for all displaced residents. Consistency on both parties' end would lend itself to a new healthy relationship and eventually partnership. We become partners, we become friends, we trust each other, and we just, uh, you know, we just get together from time to time and decide on the things that need to be done. It's been a wonderful relationship. When I think of uh, the Near West Side, I mostly think of, of, of how big changes can impact the neighborhood. You have the Development United Center, you have the transformation of Henry Horner, and how if you don't have a local-based organization with a really strong leadership, the direction of that neighborhood can go um, very different from uh, a place of helping local residents benefit from development to one where local residents um, have no benefit from development. It has been better over here since they built a new house up and it has been quiet. You know, the area has changed for a better. Like I said, I grew up in Henry Horner um, housing development. My mother actually raised myself and my twin brother and my younger sister in Henry Horner development. She has a condo here in this building that you see. In the this organization is an organization that, that always uh, stood for sustaining the community, keeping the long-time residents here in the neighborhood, and also the uh, the good, the bad, and the ugly residents. Uh, the mission of Denver Westside CDC is development without displacement. We always felt that we could build a community, rebuild a community, and it not be at the expense of the indigenous folks in the community. Our mission began to change as we, you know, seriously took a look at what we were doing, that housing in and of itself will not change the conditions that people were living under the conditions that were confronting people. So we began to expand our mission to address um, health and safety, jobs, jobs training, literacy, and a host of other things to, to begin to address the wholeness and completeness of individuals that live within the confines of West Haven. They provide employment, they provide education, they provide financial specialists. So that's one of the better things about them and also all the after school programs that they have for the children in this community because without those, those kids could be doing something else less productive. I think some of the greatest achievements of the Near West Side CDC that come to mind um, really focus on I think what's a real passion for some of the leadership both past and present which is the young people of the neighborhood. The youth are the meat that will inherit the earth so we have to do and infuse as much knowledge and skill and whatever we have to offer to youth um, in, in, in volumes. If we don't invest in youth, um, we're gonna sorely pay the price later. With the future in mind, Near West works to provide West Haven's youth with programming in dance, music, as well as non-traditional and traditional sports. I think it's one of the better sports programs in the city that we do. Matter of fact, our baseball team was our league champions last year. Uh, that was a seven year quest. We began to stress sports after uh, we had a number of shootings and one death in particular. A um, young man was killed and we started the uh, Safe Summer uh, Basketball League. It's a summer program primarily for basketball to, to keep kids off the street, get them involved in, in productive activities. This has been one of the focuses of, of Near West. And they have their championship game here at the United Center each, each year for the last couple of years. Now, we don't provide the United Center to anyone. 
Neil West would continue in its mission to improve the quality of life for West Haven's residents by also concentrating its efforts on addressing the economy of the neighborhood. The organization really made its name and made its case at the beginning in terms of community development in the housing field, but then uh, grew into uh, other fields in, the, in a more comprehensive approach to the neighborhood that included uh, business development and economic development, for example, the Walgreens store that uh, the organization brought back to the community and then more recently has been involved in bringing a full service grocery store. Walgreens was significant in a lot of ways. First retail development six, since the uh, riots of 68 and it was developed uh, with a nonprofit, uh, New West Side Community Development Corporation. And that in turn began to open up the Madison Street corridor uh, for other businesses to take a look at possibly locating here. What we wanted to be able to show is that we could rebuild communities, keep the indigenous folks in place, bring in new people, new incomes, new cultures, new you know, different races and still maintain uh, a diverse, a new but diverse community. As new businesses moved in, subsequently increasing traffic and revenue for existing businesses, Near West's foresight would prove to be spot on. Along with continued investments from the Bulls Blackhawks franchise, the Madison Street Corridor would once again come alive. While providing residents with a new quality of life, West Haven remains true to the people and staples that laid foundation for the neighborhood's revitalization. Like its symbol, the proverbial phoenix, Near West continues to help prove that through self-empowerment, this community could most certainly rise from the ashes of the fires that once laid waste. This organization has been totally true uh, to its principles from, from day one, and it's done a wonderful job of uh, improving the community without displacing people who are in the community. This community has gotten better because people have moved in, not because people have moved out. It's a demonstration of the importance of change and being accepting of change and working hard for that change. The example it's set for other communities, not just in Chicago, but around the country, of what can be done when community, government, and private industry come together. The whole neighborhood becomes a much stronger and um, uh, community because of the organization, and in the community as a whole leads itself. It's just been a fabulous relationship. It's, it's over 20 years, and uh, I, you know, I, I, I can't think of anybody that I've been involved with in business over a long period of time where we really have never had any disagreements or arguments. It's, uh, it's great, it's just, it's just a wonderful thing. Um, the, this neighborhood is in good hands and will have a future uh, because of the good work of good people um, who, um, who are here at the New West Side Community Development Corporation. How many of us get a chance to do something that you, tangible that you can see that changes people's lives? And Near West changed people's lives and uh, un say under the earnest leadership, we're all kind of going along with him on the ride. But you can see it's changed people's lives and that's a very good feeling. And you uh... <laughs> no, I'm recording, so I got this. Uh, I'm recording, so I'm getting on it. You ready? <laughs> okay. Um, Thursday came agreed upon meeting day. And uh, so we ended up having to videotape the Cosby show for my day to watch later. <laughs> Gates, let's see what we can do about lunch.